Hey, good morning. It's Michael Lipinski. I know it's been a while. Um, I've been pretty busy with doing a lot of editing. All right, so uh, chapter 16, continuing on with our uh, uh, BIM Revit tutorial. Um, again, we got to relax. We got to relax. Uh, creating stairs and railings. This is not easy. And again, we're going to have to go back and practice and practice and practice over and over and over again. Because practice makes perfect. So let's just get, uh, let's get right into this, right? Let's get right into this. I have a open uh, uh, a stair template that uh, is downloadable from the Books Companion website, as we discussed. And um, I'm going to read through this verbatim so that we can continue on because we have to get to annotation. And I have coordination uh, meeting tomorrow afternoon. So um, I really, we got to get to annotation. It's very important. All of this that we've been able to accomplish so far is... Uh, is moot if we can't get it onto construction documentation, design documentation, and convey it uh, in the formats that we need to convey. So, in the abstract sense, it's important that we abstract the, this data uh, so again so that we can articulate it to uh, the client. Now, creating stairs. Creating stairs and railings in Autodesk Revit software can be challenging. In addition, stairs and railings are often sculptural as well as functional, and there is a limit to the amount of customization you can design with the provided tools and commands. An entire book could be written about mastering stairs and railings in Revit. Considering the breadth of functionality in these tools and the unlimited number of design configurations they can be used to create, Instead of walking through a few examples of creating stairs and railings, this chapter will give you foundational knowledge about the rules, parts, and key functionalities of these tools that you can use them, so that you can use them in the most effective way possible for your own designs. We will also give you some ideas to tackle tougher decision, uh, tougher, de um, tougher design challenges by thinking about the default tools. In this chapter, you will learn to understand the key components of stairs and railings, understand the different stair tools, and apply them to custom designs. Design railings and use the railing tool for other model elements. Implement best practices. Designing stairs and railings. Designing and iterating complex stairs and railings in any software application can be difficult. You will need to thoroughly understand the rules and constraints of the application. In effect, learn the language of the application. To communicate fluently in that language, you need to be able to think fluently. And if anyone knows me and has been following along in this diatribe of videos, that hasn't always been the case uh, for me. Yeah. But through the stress, I will, I will, I will uh, persist that uh, I implement this tool. You almost have to be able to think beyond the individual words and begin to arrange whole ideas. And I'll, I'll say it again. Maybe someday um, this will uh, have a little more reach. You can't rest on your laurels in life in general. You can't rest on your laurels. It's not wise to become complacent. And... Listen, this isn't for everyone. If you want to sit on a lounge chair on the weekends and relax because of the stressful week that you had, that's fine. And stress is a killer. I understand that. I understand that. But I don't have the luxury of resting on my laurels, nor do I have the luxury of nepotism, nor do I have the luxury of riding the coattails of others. Everyone on this earth, everyone on this earth must stand alone. We all put our, our pants on one leg at a time. And I insist, I insist that uh, I, uh, I move forward because it's July 5th and yesterday was Independence Day. And uh, independence plays a lot, of, a, lot of part, a big part of this. Uh, independence. Are you independent or are you dependent on something else? I guess in, in, in essence, we're all dependent on someone or uh, something to assist us along the road of life. But in, in some cases, folks have no one. 
and all they have is themselves. And at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, you'll find you are all alone. You're alone. You're all by yourself. You're gonna have to get uh, you have to get up, pick yourself up, touch yourself off, and get moving. Time waits for no man, and time is money. Now, regardless of how well you know how to use a particular application, you have to incorporate imagination and complex design issues. Sometimes stairs and railings are straightforward and functional. For example, a steel or concrete egress stair. And there's not much room for creative thinking. But in many cases, stairs and railings are conceived as feature elements within a space. They will be touched and experienced up close. Stairway to heaven. They may be extraordinarily complex and spatial, almost an inhabited structure. Now I know I gotta quit smoking, or I'm, I'm on the uh, last rung. I'm on the top step. At 50, you know, you really should start to think about uh, arterial sclerosis. I can read the writing on the wall. So uh, if anyone's been following my videos, I smoke a lot. And uh, it has to do with nerves, you know, just like anything else. So, <clears throat> I'm not going to get into that right now. But no one's going to hire a 50-year-old smoker. So you have to fake it. You have to lie. No one, no, any human resources uh, director was not going to want to hire a smoker only because they know it's going to cost them down the road in healthcare. <laughs> Why are you going to hire a liability? <clears throat> this is how it goes. All right, so uh, I don't want to step in and out. Revit is purpose-built for designing building elements and relating them to the rules of commonly constructed relationships. Doors associate with walls, furniture is associated with floors, furniture, and so on. The software is biased, and so are people. The software is biased towards relationships, specific to designing a building and maintaining those relationships as the design changes. Does anybody know anything about bias? Let me tell you something. Reverse bias, reverse biased bipolar transistors. Do your research. Do your research. You want to learn something about complexes? Follow my videos. Go to the first one. Or write this diatribe off as the rantings of a madman. Now, schizoaffective disorder and hysteresis has a lot to do with this. You can easily write this off as just a uh, computer geek speak. But in order to do this, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of focus, a lot of research, and a lot of failure, and a lot of persistence. So before, don't knock it until you try it. Don't knock it until you try it. Now, I'm not going to say, oh, well, I want to see you do it. Let's see what you, how you would uh, handle the pressure. But before you critique, uh, I'd like you to take a step back and uh, walk in somebody else's shoes for a second and see uh, the, the environmental maximum stress fracturing that this type of endeavor can, uh, can have on an individual or an organization. This isn't easy. It, it takes a certain level of expertise, a higher degree of learning, a higher degree of persistence. And, and that's why um, I've pursued it. Because, again, it's the study of space and time and how much little time we really have and how to maximize it and how to expedite it and how to uh, efficiently 
conveying these articula articulations in the time frame that we have. Because again, time is money. Now, Revit is purpose built for designing building elements. And uh, we have to maintain those relationships as the design changes. When you're conveying something, it's perpetual motion, right? It's perpetual motion. It's, uh, it's the laws of physics. The body in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted upon upon some outside source. So review the laws. Review your laws. And you'll find sustenance and sustain. And you'll start to learn about notes and music and harmony and all the things that go into making structures stand and sticking to your guns because numbers don't lie now again I go off on a tangent because I told you I'm going to sprinkle some theology and some philosophy into this course because architecture is sometimes a little bit more than the nuts and bolts it's about people too and the software has more of an effect on people in the organizations than employ it than it actually does on anything else you'll find uh, you'll change you as an individual will change now it's purpose built as am I I'm purpose built but I'm not biased but the software is the software is biased towards relationships so and to make things a little more complicated as if we don't have it complicated enough in life with some of the folks that are biased and deliberately make relationships a bit more complicated. There is a specific language for creating stairs and railings in Revit architecture. And I know a lot of folks will know this. Um, and I'm not a carpenter. I'm not, I'm not St. Joseph. So, for example, figure 16.2 illustrates uh, the edit baluster placement dialog box for a baluster condition. So let me just give you a little uh, jump into that. A baluster, obviously, if you're uh, following along. Well, here's the editor, edit baluster, baluster placement dialog box. And as you can see, there are a lot of parameters, settings, uh, rules, distances, configuration, uh, that you can start to manipulate. And they're profile-based, just like the, uh, some of the extruded blends and, and some, of the, uh, some of the other components that we had, we had done in the past exercises. So you'll start to see that um, you'll be able to do this. It, it's not insurmountable. Now, balusters are also families that you can bring in and You've seen some of the balusters and some of these structures that you've been in over the years, haven't you? Some of them are so ornate, so beautiful. Don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted. One of the things that I learned coming up in Local 3 and in the New York City environment, and in, in the tri-state area for that matter, is that everyone's going to take a shot at you. God forbid you try to achieve something that someone deems is beyond the, your realm of possibility, they're going to let you know that this isn't for you, and they're going to put you in your place. God forbid you try to achieve anything in life. Some folks, they'll make sure you don't, because misery loves company. Now, I want you to know that. <laughs> I want you to know that. You're going to run into barriers, and some of them aren't made of materials. Some of them are made of superficial facades that... I see right through. I see right through. And I, I have kids, you know. And I, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to let them have to uh, go through life running away from bias. Now, you need to head on. So, this is the edit baluster placement dialogue box. And we can get to this a little bit. Um, but we're not licensed architects yet. Right? You're not a licensed architect. Maybe you are. I'm a licensed architect. I'm something else. 
So, enough without me. Before we begin detailed exercise for creating stairs and railings, let's review the main components of each object type and how they are organized into a Reviewing the key components of stairs and railings. Stairs and railings are system families, like the walls, right? Not loadable, but duplicatable and editable to conform and to be customized as you uh, see fit to your design. So they exist only within the project environment. Can be transferred from other projects as well, right? However, they are supported by regular families that provide needed components to the stairs, such as balusters and railings and profiles for stair nosings. As you should already know, these types of families can be shared between projects <laughs> only by copying and pasting using the transfer project standards tool we're including them in your project templates. And I just saw uh, an ad from Balkan, who's, uh, Balkan's, if you look at them on YouTube, they're giving away some templates and some system, some family files. So if you're interested in uh, a really good architectural firm and, and grabbing some data from a, uh, a colleague or a, uh, uh, a team member, look for Balkan Architects. They, uh, he, he just threw it out there, and if I was you, I would grab his templates. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Balkan architects. The, the, the kids, unbelievable. Anyway, <laughs> uh, do your research. Pay attention to the industry demands that you do. Okay, so, I don't want to go off on a tangent. I just wanted to add that because um, there are several component family templates that serve as subsets of stairs and railing system families, such as profiles, posts, and panels. Reviewing the basic rules of stairs. Before you start to create any stairs in a project, you should become familiar with the basic rules related to the special elements in Revit. We will discuss the actual geometric components later, but first let's review the parameters that drive the geometry. When you launch the stair tool, it is assumed that you want a stair to be generated between two levels. That's a big assumption, right? That's a huge, huge assumption. It's a huge assumption. This is the uh, detail of the uh, feature stair in Apple's Fifth Avenue retail store. <laughs> so it, they assume that you want them to uh, span up to two levels. But if you start the tool from a floor plan view, the base level will be the level associated with the floor plan view, and the top will be the next level above. Keep in mind that this may be a level that is not, that is, I'm uh, oh, sorry. Keep in mind that this may be a level that is not the next major level above. It could be a minor level, such as a mezzanine. Always check the instance parameters in the properties palette when you're creating a new stair. You can also assign top and base level offsets in the instance parameters the same way you can for walls, and we did this in a few other exercises. So let's just take a quick uh, look at the instance parameters of a stair. So I just uh, go up to the uh, architectural tab within the architectural ribbon. You'll see that there is a uh, circulation panel, and within the circulation panel, there are uh, some, some commands, some tools. We have the uh, railing uh, tool. It creates a railing by sketching the railing path using the draw to drawing tools and options to ske sketch the railing elements. Place on stair slash ramp places a railing on a stair or ramp. When placing a railing on a stair, you can choose to place it on the stair treads or stringers. Then we have, uh, next to this, we have a ramp. It's a ramp to the building model. Anyone who knows anything about AIA compliance will appreciate that this tool exists, as well as the AIA individual that has to go up this ramp. As a ramp, it's a ramp to the building model. To add a ramp, open a plan view or a 3D view. Uh, the default settings for the top level and top offset properties may make the ramp too long. Try setting the top level to the current level and the top offset to a lower level. And then we have stair. It's a stair to the building model by creating common run, landing, and support components. To add stairs, open a plan view or a 3D view. 
The number of treads for a stair run is based on the distance between the floor and the maximum riser height defined in the stair type properties. Now, there's a lot of math and trig and trigonometry in stairs. There's a lot of math, mathematics and trigonometry. But know that this is something that uh, has been accomplished uh, prior by many folks. So it's not insurmountable. As you see, there are a lot of calculations. You can see this guy here, he's got it down, right? He's got it down. Uh, and, and, and a lot of folks don't need to use the power of a computer. They can use the power of the com they use the power of the computer. They don't need to use the power of the computer. They use the power of the computer, right? So uh, it's uh, pertinent and uh, prudent to note that yeah, there's going to be math. Yeah, there's going to be math, and if that's something that you're going to uh, shy away from and th uh, throw to just computer geek speak. That's your prerogative. Uh, but again, let's not get into biasing all day because this is a certification objective. And we're looking at the instance parameters of a stair. So again, we have two levels here. And I'm just going to draw a simple stair. I'm going to pick a point. If you look at the status bar, click to enter run start point. I'm just going to pick it. And when I get, I pull all the way out, I'm at 47, point, uh, 47 feet 8 inches. It created 18 risers, 18 risers, uh, and that's all it created. And, and you say, well, why? Well, just like it said, it's going gonna, it's gonna to create them based on the level, the distance between the levels. So it, the book doesn't get into uh, actually doing this design just yet, but I wanted to just show you that there are uh, some uh, contextual tools that open up in the context of invoking the stair command. Uh, as you can see, the option bar and the, uh, the, the um, instance parameter dialog box is uh, open. A non-monolithic run. Non-monolithic. So now, again, a lot of constraints, a lot of parameters, um, and there are a lot of settings that we're going to get into as best we can during this uh, fundamental exercise. So now, let's go back to the text because this is a certification objective. So I'll just give you a quick... Uh... We got a TUFA. All right, so... You can also assign top and base level offsets in the instance parameters the same way you can for walls. Give me a second here, uh, the view. Let me tile these. WT, ZA, right? And that gets us to our, uh, our canvas uh, WT, ZA. That gets us to our canvas, so we can take a look at this in uh, multiple views. So as you can see, we have two sets of stairs on two levels. Now, using the overall height determined by the base and top levels, the stair object will be equally divided into risers. The maximum riser height is defined in the type properties for every stair type. Again, I'm going to get into that command again so I could show you. Actual riser height. Almost 7 inches. 7 11. <laughs> 7 11. I haven't lit a cigarette. I haven't lit a cigarette. Using the overall height. Determined by the base and top levels, the stair object will be equally divided into, into risers. The maximum riser height is defined in the type properties of every stair type. 
The overall height of the desired stair will be equally divided into risers, not exceeding the defined maximum riser height. Tread depth is specified in the stair type's properties as well, but that may be overridden if you manually lay out the treads in sketch mode. The tread depth may also accept a global parameter. Now, again, the, the, the text said that we were going to understand the key components. And, and I'm not 100% sure if, if you do, um, because there are a lot of key components. Let me just cancel out of this and let's take another look at key components of stairs. Well, let's just take a peek here. Uh, I, I have some... Uh, There we go. As you see, there are a lot of components that make up a stair. A lot of components. So, I just want you to maybe pause the video one day and maybe take a look because there are a lot. And I, I was told years ago that a lot of architects come out of school and that's all they work on, <laughs> or stairs. So, yeah, in addition to, to the simple rule of overall riser height, some public agencies, agencies require stair calculation to be employed for dimensional compliance. This type of calculation can be enabled from the stairs type properties as well. With either of the stair commands activated, click the edit type button and then the edit button on the calculation rules parameter. This will give you the stair calculator dialog box, which will allow you to enter the code base values driven, um, driving the creation of the stairs. And I'll show you that. Calculation rules parameter. So in the context of uh, creating a stair, there's a calculation rules parameter. And this is a system family assembled stair, cast in place, precast, um, seven inch max riser, 11 inch max tread, 711. So if we go here and you can see there, there are 711, maximum run width, three feet. Um, you can see that there's a run type, a two inch tread, one inch nosing, quarter inch riser, landing type, non, non monolithic, function, interior. So I just want you to go, go through these. Uh, right support, a closed stringer, right support type stringer, two inch width, right lateral offset, left support stringer closed, stringer two inch width, it's symmetric with the left of the right one. Um, left lateral offset, middle support, could very well be. Uh, middle support type, middle support number, graphics, single zigzag, cut mark type, and then all the code compliant information. But we're talking about calculation rules. And well, here, here's the stair calculator dialog box that shows that we could use the stair calculation, calculator for slope calculation. Results are used for stair creation only, but they will not modify existing stairs. So you only get this dialog box within the context of creating the stair. And you see these parameters and these uh, calculations can be uh, manipulated, changed a little bit, but you are going to have to provide them um, because some public agencies require a, cal a stair calculation to be employed for dimensional compliance. It's going to be a submittal. It's going to be a submittal. Uh, you'll have to provide your uh, your work, your scrap paper. It's like in school, right? You do the math and then let me see the scrap. Let me see the scrap. All right, so uh, just keep that in mind. That's why I believe the teachers make you do it. I want to see your work. All right, so that is uh, located within the type properties within the context of creating the stair, um, within the context of. So... Uh, that code base values or those code base values will be the driving factor behind the creation of the new stairs. Now, stairs you create will be associated with a base level and top level. You can also assign offset distances to the base and top levels, which will allow the stairs to start or end later or sooner, depending on the design. If the datum objects are adjusted or the offsets are redefined, the stairs will automatically adjust within the calculated rules as the stair remains associated with the datum objects. This means that if the height reduces, the riser count will remain, but each riser will be shorter. Try this in AutoCAD. You can, you can create a parametric stair block, but please, please, stop. Get with the program. In other words, the footprint or plan of the stair will remain unchanged. If the height of the stair run increases and an automatic adjustment would violate the maximum riser height, you will receive a warning. 
that the actual number of risers is different from the desired number of risers. In other words, the footprint of the stair will not change automatically. It is up to you to edit the stair to add more risers where you feel they are appropriate. Before we discuss the basic component of stairs and railings, download and open the file c16-00-stair-rail.rvt, or the metric version, from the book's companion website from the Wiley Publishing Group. And as a matter of fact, if you're interested, go visit their office. They're right on uh, Frank Sinatra Drive in Hoboken. They have an office there. It's a pharmaceutical company in the building as well. So, yeah, go to the Cybex.com website. You'll learn a lot. And again, this is coming from Stevens Institute of Technology. I, I, uh, <laughs> I infiltrated the campus. I had to infiltrate the campus, um, as well as MIT uh, and Berkeley and the University of Southern California and Penn State. What do you think I've been doing for the last 10 years? <laughs> think I've been sitting around, resting on my laurels? What do you think I've been doing? Yeah, you folks that have been you know, making these lewd comments about my Facebook posts. What do you think I've been doing, silly? <laughs> Hidden tail risk. Working with stair components. <clears throat> with previous version, versions of Revit, stairs were created using either the stair by sketch or stair by component tool. In Revit 2018, there is one stair option based on the stair by component features, feature of previous versions. The main part of the stairs, the risers and treads, is called the run in Revit. The structural elements that hold the run in place are represented by landings and supports in the stair tool. In the tool, each of these basic elements, run, landing, support, is defined with its own unique type parameters, run. The critical parts of a run are the construction material definitions and tread and riser settings. There are two system family, families for runs in the default project template, monolithic run and non-monolithic. A monolithic run is essentially a single material for the stair stringer, tread, and riser. Typically, monolithic runs are used for cast in place and precast concrete stairs, whereas non-monolithic runs for stairs made of wood, metal, and various other materials. <laughs> support. The supports for an assembled stair usually take one of two forms. In Revit, these are referred to as carriage open or stringer closed, as shown in figure 16.5. Carriage and stringer are system families you can find in the project browser on the families of stairs. And we've been through the project browser. We know where uh, those families are located, right? We remember. I hate to give you a quiz, but we do remember, right? Um, if you go, again, I hate to reiterate this, cause, but I'm used to it. This is what everyone asks me when I, when I try to teach this course. So, again, in the root directory of your operating system, you'll see a hidden folder that you have to unhide. And it's called program data. And within that program data is a subject called Autodesk. It's the fourth directory down. It usually always is. Because it spells Autodesk. RVT 2020. I hate to sound like a pompous ass. But yeah, you're gonna see that it's in this directory. These are the um, families that you could use to create your, uh, your runs and your supports. So if you go to, you got railings, balusters, supports, terminations, if we go down to uh, profiles, you see there's railings. And all sorts of uh, profiles to create this stair. Now, before I go any further, I want you to take a look 
I said, yeah, rise over run, right? Rise over run. Roof pitch, it's the same as roof pitch to a certain extent, but much, much more, much, much more. There are a lot of uh, calculations that go in, and again, the critical parts of the run are the construction, material definitions, and tread and riser settings. you select either the carriage or stringer option in the stair type properties and I want to show you carriage open stringer closed the uh, peak at this so you get a better understanding of the nomenclature this may give you a better understanding. Let me find a good one for you. Ah, that's not bad. That's not bad. All right, so if you select either the carriage or stringer option in the stair type properties, you can select one of the respective support types. For example, the right support property may be carriage open, and the right support type value would be carriage two inch width. So let's do it like this. Search it up like that. This video is running long. A closed carriage dependent stair. Stair carriage. Now, I had made an attempt years ago when I owned my home of the Nickel Pack home, our home. I could not. Oh, it was horrible. I was horrible. Doing it with your hands and, and doing it on paper with a computer is two, are two different things. I, I, I'm telling you, I'm not professing to be able to go in the field with a sawzall or skill saw if it's on a bench saw and create stringers and treads. Trust me, I'm not. I, I'm not going to come down to the site with a framing square. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to be coming down with a, with a framing square and doing any of this. Don't worry. Yes, your job is safe with me. I was a laborer. I started as actually I started as a paper boy, but I was a laborer with a jackhammer. Persistence of tools is my thing. I'm something else. I'm not a carpenter. I'm still a laborer. After all these years, I haven't really changed much since Local 54. I mean, I got into Local 3, but I still am doing. I've been doing the same thing since since. Well, Actually, I've been doing the same thing since I was a paper boy for the Journal Jersey Journal. Now, landings. Uh, landings. Oh, by the way, good morning. I am so sorry. Hopefully, you all got your coffee. Before we get into the landings, let's take a look at this one. Carriage open, stringer closed. Now, monolithic. A large speed, speed, uh, piece of stone. Monolithic. Mass is solid and uniform. Monolithic. And non monolithic articulation, conveying architecture, vocabulary, speak, speak, speak when spoken to, non monolithic. Okay, so understand. 
that vocabulary plays a huge part, part, uh, important part of this. I've been stressing this from day one. And architecture is right up your alley. If it's your intent to increase your repertoire of your vocabulary, it'll help. And so you know, folks will judge you by the way you speak in life. If you're going to go on TikTok and speak in slang, you're going to show the world how much effort you put in to your modus operandi, how much effort you really put in. You will show. You will show it. I was on TikTok for the first time. I couldn't believe what I saw. I couldn't believe what I saw. When I hear my son tell me I'm about to go down the stairs to get a sandwich, I, I, I want to grab him by his mouth. And I, and I want uh, about to. About to. It's the letter of the law that I, 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 I insist, I insist, having been subject to it and having been fascinated by it and the magnanimous nature of architecture, I insist, I insist that, that the vocabulary uh, be something that you, uh, you focus on during this exercise. If this course is for you, it doesn't come easy. It could hurt. This is a very, very difficult course. But landings, landings are the transitional elements between runs. And that's where we're at. We're at the landing now. We're at the landing. We've made it up very far up the uh, food chain, up the evolutionary scale. You know, some folks haven't reached this civilization yet. And there are animals in the streets. I, I can delineate. You may, they may look human, but uh-uh, no. It may wear clothes. It, it may have logos and brands, and it may look like a human being. But you can tell right off the bat, and some of them even talk like human beings. But there is a huge delineation line between civil and uncivilized. I'm not saying that you have to put doilies down uh, near your crudite table and have your beautiful stainless steel chafing dishes polished by your staff. I'm not in any stretch of the means. But please, speak English for Christ's sakes or at least speak eloquently to a certain extent, because this is the elegance of, of Revit. It's the elegance. And conveying architecture is going to require that you have a certain level of eloquence in your vocabulary. So landings are the transitional elements between runs. As such, one of the main settings in the type properties for landing is the same as run. With this setting enabled, you are left with only the identity data and the material property for monolithic landings. If the same as run setting is disabled, you can treat the landings as another tread with the same opportunities to apply a thickness and a nosing profile. So we've made it to this step. Right? We've made it to this step. Now, those who have followed this, this, this path, and there are a lot of us, you know, you and my uh, digital twin, if we've made it this far, we've accomplished a lot. We have. If you've made it this far, you've accomplished a lot. And, and that only you can take that away from you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold back there because we're going to be getting into the integrated parts of a railing. We're going to be getting into the integrated parts of a railing. And in order for this to be sequentially correct, I have to go back and do a lot of editing. And I still, this is free. This is free. Uh, I'm getting many, many, many views all over the world with these videos. India to to Kamakachka, uh, all over the world. And, and I appreciate it, anyone's following. I do appreciate the fact that you're at least viewing it. Because yeah, I get to see 
of the reach that I that I intended, or I, I attempted to uh, to convey, and, and that to me is important. So I'm not interested, or at least let's not be foolish. Of course, I'm interested in monetary gain and return on my time investment. Uh, but there is a certain satisfaction knowing that it's not falling on deaf ears. So for you folks internationally and domestically that are following these videos, I appreciate it wholeheartedly. Um, I would appreciate a few more subscribers because, again, I kind of still work for the New Jersey Journal. And, uh, I am here in the tri-state area, and that is a, a key component to this. Uh, location, location, location. In real estate, location is very important. And I just so happen to be a hop, skip, and a jump from the uh, the melting pot creme de la creme, creme de brulee, over in the, uh, in the Big Apple. And there's a lot, there's a lot there. There's a lot. Oh, there's another lot. There's a lot that's new. Our Lady of Mount Carmel is coming up this week. We'll talk about Keen and Abel a lot at another time. Told you, there's a lot that's new. Maybe some didn't know. Scroll down to get to know me more. <laughs>